In the episode 1384 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at Sportsology.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Hello, everyone. Welcome to FDH Lounge Mini, episode 1382. This is FDH Managing Partner Rick Morris here. And uh, we have with us today, uh, gentlemen, uh, this is going to be a very, very real treat. Uh, a relatively newly minted, uh, as uh, the lineage goes, FDH Lounge dignitary, as well as fitness and pop culture expert. And I add to that, of course, host of JB's Fantastic Finds. So a very eclectic resume. Our old friend, uh, John Bastow. And uh, generally, each year we fit in uh, reviews of uh, both the Emmys and the Oscars, uh, at the very least. And uh, so we're here today to do the 2021 Emmys justice, as we always do. And uh, again, always a pleasure uh, to have on a good friend of us, John Bastow. John, welcome back to the show, my friend. How are you doing today? Oh, my gosh. You know I love being on FDH Lounge. I'm an <laughs> FDH dignitary. You are. You are. You are You are redefining the term, my man. It is, uh, it is good to have you on. And uh, certainly uh, a dignitary like yourself is uh, knowledgeable about uh, many things here, including uh, fine fashion and what one might want to look like on the, the red carpet. And uh, we always have fun breaking down these parts it's of the show. About, it's all about Billy Porter's wings. It's Billy Porter's wings with those big black wings. That, that, that's the win right there. That and also um, the shoes that were on. Who had, who had those great shoes on that I that, from Saturday Night Live again? Uh, Boating Yang. Oh, okay. Uh, what's his name again? Hold on. Well, while you're looking that up, I had Billy Porter in my notes as well. Uh, what I had for him was unitard with turkey wings. That was my <laughs> description of his outfit. <laughs> so. I said it. I, I had it right, actually. And, and by, by, by the way, Bowden Yang's uh, uh, shoes were everything. But yes, Billy Porter um, was insane, insane with that outfit. He is always a standout. And whether you love it, hate it, you can never forget it. You can never forget it. He'll never let you, uh, to be sure. And uh, there were some other ones here. I want to preface this one here by saying I am not at all making fun of this gal's weight because th it could be somebody who's a skinny little twig in the same outfit. And I would talk the same way about this because it's how much extra there was around her, both the ruffles and how much of it, several square yards around her. Nicole Byer, my note for her is that was enough fabric to enclose the old Pontiac Silver Dome. I think she went a little overboard with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, first of all, I adore her because she is um, hilarious and right. everything. And it's funny because I saw, I, I know, obviously, obviously, I know what picture you're talking about and everything, but, <laughs> but she's just, I mean, she's, first of all, she's wearing the color of royalty, number yes, one. So, you know, true. anybody in purple is already like, you're, you're already an eight out of 10 in my book. I mean, <laughs> you're just looking for the gravy at that point. If you've chosen purple, you're, you're, you're already there. But yeah, that was, that, that was a massive amount of fabric and it has nothing to do with anybody's size. That would be a massive amount of fabric on anybody. Exactly. Um, it's, just, it's just the style of the dress, but also. Um, incredibly memorable. As I said, purple is the color of royalty. She was a queen. Well, along those lines, I bring this next one up here. This is one that's very personal just to my own circumstance here. And, and being somebody who's just been too lazy to paint over what I inherited here when I bought my place, uh, my utility <laughs> room, Keenan Thompson, he had the same shade of lavender that I see on the walls every time I go to do my laundry. I'm not sure that that makes sense to anybody else, but that's what it put me in mind of. <laughs> Who is that now? Uh, Keenan Keenan Thompson had that oh, like yeah. la lavender that's a, that's type tux. That's a hard color to pull off. Yes, that's a that's a very once again, as I said, uh, you know, Nicole Byer with yeah. the deep purple. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to go wrong when you have that color. You know, you really have to work at it hard. Keenan Thompson had a. 
that's a difficult color. I didn't know they made tuxes in that color. I don't know if the tux started in that color and or it may have just, you know, gotten to that color over the years. It looked like it had seen life and, and life had not been kind to it. Well, I, I would agree with that, but that's a guy that's clearly game for anything. And, and again, and I, also, I, I also think he's, he's, he's just awesome. I he is. He's just incredible. I mean, his longevity on Saturday Night Live, he always makes me laugh. Yep. Um, and it, that's just a very, very hard. When I tend to say, like, um, whether it be a guy or a girl. I mean, I remember when uh, who, there was a, there was someone who wore that deep purple uh, as a guy in a tux, and 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 I mean, I give him extremely high marks once again because it's deep purple, and um, and and then some people panned him and everything, but you, but you always remember it. I always think if you go with the jewel tones, like the very vibrant colors, right? It's harder, I think, if you have like a washed out type of pastel no matter what the color is i think it's just very very hard because it always looks like you know it, it's, it's not making either statement either the either the terrible or the you know or or the very it's not making a bold statement as i think what i'm looking to say exactly and washed out is always a bold statement and i i say this as somebody who gets ragged on by his friends uh as a uh, and this is kind of a random thing. I, I just sort of attached myself to them over the years, but became a University of Tennessee football fan, and that washed-out orange. My friends always rag on me for wearing that. So I have a fantasy football team uh, name this year that is the washed-out orange hillbilly army. So <laughs> props to anybody bold enough to wear anything washed out. It, it, it washed out is hard, and it, it, it's, you know, as I said, the pastels are real, real hard, um, unless it's like, you know, just a super, super cut of a suit, or if it's a super, super style of a dress, it's very, very hard to pull off, as opposed to, you know, the bold, vibrant colors, I it, think. And, exactly. And also, I, think, I also think it's it's less memorable, and I think it's less memorable in both a good way and a bad way, meaning like, it's if it was great, it's less memorable. And if it's if it was terrible, like something that always stands out as the worst thing, like who was it Bjork who had the swan dress and everything, right. you always remember it, okay? But you're not going to remember just a washed out outfit, right? And uh, speaking of the swan dress, uh, they, they, we're starting to get a genre here of where it's a gown that flows into something else. So uh, Cynthia Erivo with the uh, standard white gown flowing into what appear to be feathers of deceased exotic birds. This is now becoming a genre at these things. <laughs> she's actually a fashion go-to usually too. Yeah, yeah, that she's was. Actually a, she's actually a fashion go-to for a lot of these events. She's definitely one that uh, a lot of folk uh, tend to talk about. Well, exactly. So what, what was your what, what was your take? Did you, did you like the feathers? Did you not like the feathers? Where where are you where are you standing on that? I mean, I didn't like it as much as like. I will say, like, Laura Dern's one that we talked about from the Oscars, that was, like, so over the top, it circled back around to being cool again. And I'm not sure that this one circled all the way back I think, around. I think this one, I think this one is actually, I, I would call it a combination of, 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 of a mermaid that basically was combined with the, uh, you know, exotic birds. Because it's like a mermaid-type dress, and then it just has the bird feathers all at the bottom. Well, yeah, and uh, that was that was a very, very interesting look. Uh, there's one here, uh, coincidentally, as we're recording this uh, in the hours after the big uh, wrestling show at uh, Arthur Ashe Stadium on TV tonight here. Uh, one of the performers out there, uh, Sting, it looked like one of his old Scorpion Death Drop outfits was repurposed for the, the tux jacket for Anthony Anderson. I mean, did you get a look at that tux jacket? I mean, it looked like... Yeah, that was... Uh, uh, and, and... There's a lot of throwbacks because a lot of those things look like things from back in the day. Yeah, you know what I mean. They have there's a lot of throwbacks and it's a lot of nostalgia fashion. Yes, in there. yes. And a lot of the ladies also chose yellow. I mean, you notice there was a lot of yellow. Like Michaela Cole had yellow on. Um, there was a lot of there was Kaylee Cuoco who came I think and you know for her her first time um you know getting uh I think she was the executive producer and also star. Of her, her, of her production, she had that neon yellow, which got a lot of kudos in it. Yellow was a big color. Yellow, I think, yep. is a very hard color to wear. Yeah, and and this is one of these things here where, and this is the flow between us of where you you lead me right into these next notes here. You've done this a couple times so far. This is the flow that we got going on. Kelly Cuoco, I had in my notes here, and this is this is a note that my dad will appreciate as someone who is a big Big Bang Theory fan. So uh, my note for her was. Uh, if Big Bird could make you horny. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say these were all in good taste, John. 
That's good. That's good. But also, I, I think the best in yellow was that Anya Taylor Joy. I think she was stunning. I think yeah, she she looked pretty good. She pulled it off uh, pretty good there. Uh, speaking of pulling off things that were uh, not necessarily a, a textbook thing that you could make work, I, I have her here uh, Annie Murphy. I said that uh, she looked like she was in a bathrobe, but not necessarily in a bad way. She was making it work. I thought I was digging this it. Was, this was Annie Murphy. Annie Murphy. Yes, I. Uh, that's that's what it looked like to me. It looked like uh, you know, and uh, the the thought of uh, emerging from uh, one's bedroom or uh, I'm sorry, bathroom. There's there's a there's a Freudian slip, right? Bathroom and seeing Annie Murphy in, in an outfit like that. Uh, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, that would be nice. That was, that, that, it's. It, it, it definitely has that look. It, 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 that 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 that's the type of it's funny. That's that, that's the type of outfit that I like to wear after after a day of cheat meals because you don't have to, it, it just it basically just hides everything. It's basically like um, you know when you, when you just say I really don't give a damn. Yeah. Uh, I'm just done. Exactly. She, 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 she also looks she also looks absolutely beautiful. Um, it's just that yes. You know, I mean her 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 face and hair and everything, but she's um that's. It really looks sort of like if, if you can imagine if you were sort of dating the Jolly Green Giant and you were trying to wear his shirt. Right. <laughs> you know, that's because it, it, it's it's sort of, you know, the sleeves are just a little too long. Uh, you know, even the shirt is going beyond the feet. Um, it just sort of it, it, it just sort of hangs. But that it's it's going to be one that's going to be talked about. But once again, once again, it's not going to be remembered for an all time worst. No, it won't. To the imagination. No, it's, it's not the Bjork swan dress. It's it's not going to. And, and and by the way, and one of the one of the differences between us here which is which was genius, by the way. Which it, was genius, by the way. It really, really was. And and I have to hone in on something you said there, which is one of the differences between us. Uh, you referred to a day when you might have cheat meals, which are known to me just simply as meals. So, <laughs> 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 and. Uh, the last note that I had here, Catherine Hahn, and I was like, not sure that you need a giant seat belt for a black blouse, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, Catherine Hahn, I have to say one thing, though. Catherine Hahn, first of all, I, I have nothing but respect for this woman. Right. If you ever look at her IMDb, she's literally in like almost every movie. She's funny as I mean, hell. She, she, she's, she's just everywhere, though. Right. She's just everywhere. She, she's somebody that you may not... I mean, a lot of people may not know her name, like if you're walking in the middle of Times Square and you say, oh, I, I just got to see this Catherine Hahn movie. Right. But the thing is, um, I mean, she's in like literally everything. There's so many movies that I'll just turn like, there she is again. There she is again. There she is. She has, she has a, a career that has just had such longevity and such diversity. And she's wearing and, 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 and she's wearing just a, a very, very large a large belt and what that does is it tends to make you look smaller so i think that she is you know being very 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 conscious of um you know showing off a great figure with that huge belt because i'm looking at the uh and she also looks in, in great shape too it looks like she did actually get sure you know you know basically much different shape than she's been in the past which is fantastic but that is the largest belt i have ever seen it it is it is ginormous, and I it, have a lot it, of respect. It is, it, it is making a statement, and I don't know if the belt actually goes fully around, or if it's just one of those things that starts sort of midway, and then just is sort of like a little like decoration. It, it was it was remarkable, and uh, a lot of respect from me for Catherine Hahn, uh, who I understand is a fellow uh, native of America's North Coast. She doesn't live here anymore, but uh, she came from here. So much respect to a Cleveland area gal, and I have to say. That in terms of her outfit, the commonality with her and Keenan Thompson is those are both people that when they do something, this is what makes them so great in comedy, they will fully commit to it. Okay, and you could see it in the outfits that they had, fully commit. Keenan Thompson, again, look, he, he to me has been on a, a I mean, there have been some bright spots to be sure, but a extremely decrepit era of Saturday Night Live. My praise for him is that he would have fit into any of the great eras of the show. You could pluck him out, put him back in time in the 80s, 90s, whatever, and he would be killing in any of those. Oh, he's, a, he's hysterical. I think he's hysterical. In every, in every sketch he does, with you, whether he has a lead part or whether he has a supporting part yep. or whatever, in every sketch, he is he brings it. He's just hilarious. And he has such longevity on that show as well. But by the way, Catherine Hahn, Another bit of respect for her. Look at those shoes she has on. Oh, Just yeah. Look at her shoes. 
I mean, what, be, just being able to walk and and physically function in those shoes, right? That's respect, right? So the, the the energy that that gal has is just truly truly amazing, and she showed it again here uh, with the outfit that she had and committing to it. So, uh, and also pro- looking super spell. Yes, yes, very much so. She looked uh, she looked very good. Uh, any other uh, red carpet notes that you had? And once again, not to belabor a point on this, uh, but uh, you know. I, Miss Taylor Joy, uh, in that I think she looked completely like a vision in the yellow. I sure. think she looked, I think she's I think she's a very, very beautiful lady. Um, and I literally think she looked like a goddess, you know, in that particular outfit, um, you know, at the at the awards. She just uh, she just brought it and was definitely, definitely a very, very memorable moment. And it was a thing where again, and and even with the things that we mentioned here, I don't know. That any of and, these... and as I said, Bo and Yang shoes, I can't believe you did not bring them up because they were everything. Yeah, yeah, I I, I didn't have that on my oh, list. Um, killer shoes. Well, that's that's what you're here for is to catch the things that I miss. And uh, the great point by you. And, and this is one of these things where, uh, again, we've, we've talked about this in the past, that between the Oscars and the Emmys, you are more likely to get the outlandish outfits. For, for the Emmys, and again, and I don't know how yeah. many of these would go on the all-time list as far as outlandish, but uh, just, just based on the conversation we've had thus far, there was enough entertaining fodder, definitely, for this year. <laughs> no, there was, it, was also, it was also the first year back. I mean, just the fact that there's anything to talk about is a good thing. Exactly, exactly, yeah, as opposed to uh, any of the, uh, you know, things happening at the height of the lockdowns or anything like that, so... You know, the actual uh, award show itself, this is one of these things where perhaps my memory is a little bit off on this. I didn't remember the Emmys being a thing on CBS uh, in the past. I know they've had the Grammys, and there's a number of things I associate with CBS, but uh, as, as far as them having this, and, and again, like you said, uh, you know, you have to think back because the pandemic has interrupted our memories of this over a period of time. But uh, having Cedric the El- uh, Cedric, <laughs> I was going to say Cedric the Alexander, Cedric the Entertainer out there, uh, you know that was yes, yes, very much so. I mean, I thought he did a pretty good job from the parts that I saw. It was clever. It was it, it was a nice clever uh, look at TV too. Exactly. I, I there was a Freudian slip as I almost called it, as I was channeling the pro wrestler Cedric Alexander, almost calling him Cedric the Alexander. I told you I was a little loopy at this point of the day when we well, started I, I'm, this. I'm impressed. That's, that's also two pro wrestling events right there. Where you're saying, you're thinking, the, the, the but, Sting reference with the outfit. Yes. And, and, and then you, then you bring then you bring up another uh, the Cedric wrestler. But but, but uh, John, this one was completely subliminal. This was just completely. <laughs> <laughs> that's what makes it even better, is how I biffed it accidentally here. But it's a thing here where I will say one of the big themes to me looking at the show itself, and uh, being being a uh, along with fellow FDH lounge dignitary Ben Chu, being big nerds about the streaming industry and the business of it, we've we've done some. Many a show, exactly, looking at the streaming services, and this just looks, that to me, that's the story of the night. Outstanding drama series, The Crown, outstanding comedy series, Ted Lasso, Ted Lasso with all of the awards uh, that came up here, the Queen's Gamut for the uh, anthology. I mean, you would expect anthology probably to go to either cable or to uh, streaming, but still, you know, to, to get that. Uh, somebody who I have been a fan of in many roles over a period of time, and so great to get to see her win outstanding lead actress. Somebody who, like you, like you said with Catherine uh, yeah. Hahn, Catherine Hahn typically hasn't had things built around her. The same could be right. said for Gene Smart. Gene Smart Agreed. has Agreed. always been in somebody else's thing. Lead in Hacks. I watched well, Hacks, I, 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 and I enjoyed it. Even, even when she was a lead, she would be a lead with other leads, like, for instance, Designing Women and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, she was a, that was a huge series, of one of the longest-running, I think, you know, uh, on TV at one point. But an ensemble. And, yeah. and I mean, and she was extremely well known from that, but she was one of four. Yes, part of an ensemble, as opposed to never really having a vehicle of her own. And it's a thing where, and I really enjoyed Hacks. I watched it. There was a part early on where the, the millennial sidekick that she had was just so annoying that I just, I mean, <laughs> I mean the character, not the actress necessarily, but they wrote the character that is so annoying that I almost tapped out, but I'm so glad I watched it all the way through season one, and Gene Smart just killed it. Uh, I mean, I also enjoyed her previously, and she was a supporting role in a large ensemble here, but the second season of Fargo. 
and playing way oh, against type. Okay. I didn't realize she was. Is that, okay. Yeah, I she. Think, she's. You like you like Fargo a lot, so that that was another critically acclaimed one. I love Fargo, and and here's the thing: this might be the only hook you need to 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 motivate you to watch it. Is that she is the wife of a and, and a player as as a as an older woman uh, in this right. thing, the older woman wife of a uh, prairie mob boss. And that she has oh, to wow. step up when her husband becomes disabled, and she's got headstrong sons that don't want to listen to her, and like she's just awesome. I mean, that was a completely dramatic role. You usually see her doing at least some comedy as she does here in this. Let, let's face it. I mean, it was a, basically a takeoff on Joan Rivers' life in Hacks. I mean, that's how I read it, and that's how I think a lot of people would would read it as a fictionalized version of Joan Rivers. But. Uh, just awesome for her. Jason Sudeikis wins for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy Series. Once again, Ted Lasso. I mean, the, 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 the streaming service is cleaning up left and right to me is the story of this thing. I, I don't think, I, I think it is too. I don't think that actual network TV, which is now considered like the dinosaur uh, medium, um, want anything of note except for Saturday Night Live winning stuff yeah I don't, think any, I don't know i can't think of any shows off the top of my head right now and you can correct me if you think of one where that won any type of category uh you know this year from like an abc nbc cbs or well Fox. Yeah, exactly and it, listen as i said before anytime saturday night live wins anything these days it's kind of a pity boink basically you know what i mean it's a thing <laughs> like hey you used to be relevant I feeling on the current season Yes, yeah, do, yeah. Here, here's an award. You used to be relevant. Here's a lifetime merit deal, whatever. But, you know, in scrolling through and, and looking at this, yeah, I mean, most of these ones are, but to me, it's significant that it's streaming over even cable because streaming uh, yes, it is. Uh, has been, you know, taking a back seat to cable until relatively recently. Again, the show Hacks, not an HBO show, an HBO Max show. So, but, but don't but don't you think? It, and, and I mean, most of the ones that won't were HBO Max as opposed to HBO, even though they're listed, even though they're basically counted together. Yeah, it's true. HBO and HBO well, Max, Maravich, really HBO Max properties. But yeah. don't you think that's because the streaming services did one thing that the regular networks never did was that they take into account the um, viewers' lives by making things available on demand and, and binge watching and stuff like that, as opposed to rolling out things on a you know you know on their own basis because i think the streaming services do so oh, do so well be, is because they started out as always uh catering to the viewer in the sense of you watch it at your leisure you watch it on your schedule not on our schedule I and those networks you can do that now too if you have the app and, and you, you still have to wait a lot of times till the till the episode first broadcast it's not like i can go on tnt and you know all of a sudden watch every episode of animal kingdom you know it, 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 before the episodes actually air, if you know what I mean. Yes. Whereas on the streaming services, you can. Absolutely, and that, and like I said, and in, in, in the things we we've, we've done in terms of covering streaming on this show, that's been a constant theme: is that we are moving to an on-demand world, and that even networks are kind of bending to that a little bit uh, more and more as we and go for period of time. Yes, it is. It is. And and, and it, nothing is more convenient than what you get from the streaming services, albeit um, some of the, uh, the streaming services don't completely go off of that model. Disney Plus, I know that they will, you know, put up the, some of their bigger series on a weekly basis right now. I am frustrated waiting for the next episode of Only Murders in the Building on Hulu. So that is a weekly uh, kind of a deal, as a lot of Hulu originals tend to be. But you're right. It by and large, it is a deal where you get them all at once. You get them whenever you want to get them. It must be said, and I'm sure that the network executives would be screaming right now if they could hear us talking, that this is the season that is going to be remembered as the pandemic season. So there was less original programming, more in the way of game shows and stuff like that that could be easier produced under the pandemic circumstances. So yes. We must take that into account. There was less in the way of series, and anytime there's less uh, drama and comedy series, there's less chances to win awards, numerically, of course. That said, are the networks ever going to bounce back substantially from the baseline of this year? I don't think so. I think this is the direction it's going, and it's going to continue to go in this direction. I think we've talked about that before, though. We've, uh, I mean, 
we have probably on with different things and just like back in the day how uh you know video killed the radio star to quote the song yep and also you know and and basically and, and tv uh killed radio and then um you know cable tv uh outshine broadcast tv yep not having the streaming services outshining cable and broadcast tv it's just, it, it's basically the world is changing and things that keep up with it. And once again, as I said, convenience is key. I have friends of mine that literally watch, that literally will just spend a weekend watching, you know, watching the entire season of something they like. So they're always in the mode and they're in that. So it's like you watch one episode, wait a week, have all sorts of things. You forget some things that happened, whatever, because your life happened. And, and, and then, you know, and, and you watch it over a period of 13, 14 or 15 weeks, whatever it is. I have friends that literally watch all the episodes back to back over a day or a weekend. And that's the way they enjoy consuming their television. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the commonality of all these shows we're talking about here is that they are very bingeable. They are, uh, you know, very, very good to, to be able to take in in that uh, kind of a, a way. And I remember years ago on the show, one of our uh, dignitaries, Nate Noy, when we were going back and forth, when we were reviewing some of the late seasons of Breaking Bad, and he was somebody who discovered it, like, you know, w like way late in the game, and my thing was like, dude, you do not know the struggle, you do not know the struggle of, you get done watching one of these episodes, and it's like, you're so hyped for the next one, but you gotta wait another week, and you can't go to sleep, because your adrenaline is just pulsing through your body, so, there are two completely different modes of watching here, but people are opting by and large. The, I think you get in the zone. I mean, you do. Like, if you want to get into that world, like let's say you're watching Game of Thrones or something, yeah. okay, and you want to get into that world, you don't, you might want to, somebody might want to just be, become lost in the Game of Thrones universe for 10 hours yeah. um, in a row. That just made, and, and that, that, that it's, a, it's an experience that we've never been able to have before the streaming services. Um, it's not something that was talked about or that, or, or that you know, anybody got a chance to do. And it, it, I think it just puts uh, the viewing pleasure and also the viewing experience at a whole different level than having to watch, like back in the day, an episode of Dynasty yep. and then waiting a week and then seeing another episode of Dynasty to see what they're doing. And, and it just, it, it's just a different, uh, it, it, it's a different level of connection. It's a different level of engagement and it's just a different level of entertainment. It is. And it's funny when you see people falling into that that aren't used to it, because I go back to the aforementioned Fargo Season 2, which I think is, the, for my money, it's the greatest anthology of all time, but uh, I remember I'm describing the season as it was happening to, and it was late in the season, I, or maybe, I think the season had just wrapped up, but it was still available on demand on cable, and I was describing it to my elderly neighbor, and then like a day or so later, she's like, you mother effer, I ended up starting watching that. I never got off the couch the whole day. I blew a whole that's, day That's watching. what I'm saying. That's, <laughs> but I have friends that like that. They, they like staying 10 straight hours. And, and yes, they'll take pee breaks and they can pause it and they don't have to worry about commercials and all that other stuff. Right. But they like becoming eclipsed in that world yeah. of whatever they're watching. Yeah. And I mean, and these Emmys basically really kind of cemented that life. It's an I event. Mean, it, yeah. It's not just watching a show. It becomes an event. It becomes a life event. I'm going to watch the the, the second season of Animal Kingdom or whatever, sit, well, sitting the whole Saturday just doing that. Yeah. To me, I, see, the thing is, I don't even have any of the streaming services because I don't really, I mean, I, I would never sit that amount of time to do something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm fine with the way things are. And I, and I actually like some of the apps where the where you can like for instance watch some of the things without commercials or you can um right. you know if, if you know you can watch episode one through five as long as episode one through five are already aired you right. know what i mean um and i see I, that i don't mind that word but i understand why people uh you know like the fact of being able to the second the, the uh, series debuts you can literally watch the entire season in a day or two Absolutely. That's a great thing to be able to do. And all I can say is, thank God I was born blessed to be the ultimate multitasker. So I can be I can be watching this and doing like three or four other things at the same see, time. That, that, now see, that's a big thing with me. Okay? Yeah. I multitask all the time. Uh -huh. but there are shows you can watch. Like any show on Bravo is great for multitasking. You don't right. have to see the, their faces. You don't have to see the action. You can just hear it in the background. That's right. You can, you, you can literally not watch certain shows. It, it's like, it causes me stress to be multitasking and trying to keep up with the show. Like, like Walking Dead is a show I like a lot. 
I cannot multitask when Walking Dead is on. Okay. I, I have to keep looking up what well, what happened because because there's a lot of stuff that goes on in between the dialogue. Right. That you have to actually physically pay attention to, and it's demanding on your attention as opposed to a Bravo show, a show on E, or something like that. That's great, or or the news, which is great background fodder and very very easy to multitask with. Yeah. Something like The Walking Dead demands your attention. I know what you mean about that. When I used to, and that just causes me stress. So that's something that I can't. Make, and that's something that causes me to screw up on whatever else I'm multitasking on. Right, right. And like back in the day, I think Justified used to be like that for me. It was harder for me to multitask when Justified was on, because there would just be the the moments in between, the, as you say, in between the dialogue and between the motion, and it's just like okay, and it, it, to where you're having to study like Walton Goggins' expression and that kind of exactly. stuff. Exactly. It's and also and also the, you go so you, you go back and look. So what the heck happened? And it's only been like thirty seconds, mm -hmm. and you're completely lost. Oh right, right. Well, there was there was a thing this past week which on uh, on billions which I've been watching and reviewing, of where there is a three-minute scene, spoiler alert, of where one of the main characters is in the kitchen cooking an omelet for his daughter and a house guest, and it was just three minutes of just watching him make an omelet, and you're waiting for something else to happen, and it never does. So, yeah, that was... <laughs> <laughs> that, now, see, that, now, see, that would have been fine, Rick, for the multitasking. Yes. That would have been perfect. Yes, exactly. And, uh, you know, Billions is a fun show, but it's not going to show up on the awards things for here because of some of the soapiness and pulpiness and whatever. So it's not going to be getting nominated alongside these other ones here. But, uh, it does get buzzed, though. It, it does. does. It does get buzzed. Actually, actually, to be honest with you, it gets a lot more buzz than some of the ones that do win awards. True. I, mean, I, I hear a lot more street talk about Billions than I do about a lot of these other shows. It, uh... You know, with the thing being set in New York, uh, and, and I think it's it's got at least one or two more seasons left, uh, on, somewhere on the Billions bucket list needs to be you making a cameo, John Bastow. I don't think they can consider this thing complete. I won't consider it complete until I see my man JB up on the screen there. It, 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 it's funny. I do get speaking. Of, I, I get asked to make uh, various cameos when doing cameo on a cameo app. <laughs> nice. Where, like, you do these things, and it's funny. I just had to do one for a podcast. A podcast had mentioned me um, on it. I guess at random or whatever. Or we're talking, and they said nice things, whatever. Right? It, you know, which was really cool. And they said, "Oh, we just talked about you on this podcast. Uh, you know, but we need you to do a cameo saying this that we can incorporate into something." So it's so I, awesome. I I love those types of um, you know inclusions in pop culture things. Well, I will say this too that in, in terms of uh, you know different types of broadcast and everything, we've got the ones that were covered here uh, on this year's Emmys. But uh, we certainly have to take uh, a, a beat here, as we did at the uh, Oscars recap, and get into JB's fantastic finds. Uh, okay. And uh, everything that's going on there, because uh, you have certainly created a unique ecosystem on Facebook, to be sure. That is insane. Well, now, um, I, well, speaking of since the last time we did this, when we talked about it with the Oscars, I mean, I've literally, literally been doing uh, JB's Fantastic Finds, which is um, a live auction show uh, where the worlds of myth and fantasy collide with jewelry. I mean, it's like basically, uh, it's it, people describe it as a combination of stand-up comedy, talk show, and home shopping network. Um, and it's, I mean, I started on like a um, multi-show channel with other shows uh, back a little over two years ago. And um, now, in these past few months, I just started at the end of last year, as uh, you know, we talked about on my own channel with uh, my own group uh, with Facebook or channel or group, whatever you call it. Um, JB's Fantastic Finds, and now we started in the past couple of months national TV commercials, and it's just expanded and blown up much more so than I ever imagined. I said this even when I was on the multi-show channel. I never expected big things from this. It was something fun I was doing, and I think maybe because I didn't put the pressure on or did – a lot of times you ever notice how when you have like huge expectations for something and you put a lot of energy into something – um, you know, it, it never goes as fast as you want it to. It never grows as big as you want it to because you always have certain expectations. And it, it, it's always like battling your expectations. That's this right. thing I had no expectations for at all. Absolutely nothing. And it just grew beyond my wildest thoughts, which didn't even exist, if you know what I mean. Sure. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's really become a thing onto its own. And the commercials... Um, that it started running, as I said, in just the past about eight, ten weeks, about the past couple months, 
um, have just exponentially blown up the show in, in a very, very good way. And it's just made me very, very more excited about things uh, just in general. And it's, you know, the audience has grown. And, I mean, the participation of the audience, the people, it's become like a family thing. And it's, it's just a lot of fun. It's just, the show is just kick-ass fun. It is, and I have to say, and one of the things I've always admired with you, as somebody who, uh, myself, I always have fingers in a lot of pies, both on different things I'm working on, things other people are working on, etc., is as much as we've joked about it in the past, uh, the whole uh, resume line of fitness and pop culture expert, I mean, you're a guy that just keeps kind of finding things and reinventing and like, okay, I haven't done this before, but I'm going to take this and make it my own. I'm going to take this and make it my own. The, the versatility to keep doing that, and that has to come from a sense of adventurousness within for you to be able to do that. And obviously, I think that's a very admirable thing. Well, first of all, thank you very much. I think this taps into, I mean, this particular show taps into uh, definitely an, an innate sales ability I think I've always had that I've always you know kept sort of latent but it always shows itself it's just like a, a natural thing I always had um, and, and people had always told me about it um, but it's just on full display here in a way and it's just and, and then the entertainment aspect keeps me very engaged and very very happy you know to see the people getting these treasures and also how they send in all these pictures of themselves with the treasures and I see that this little trinket or something that they're getting on my show is really like impacting their life and making their day better. And something as tiny as that ha has a ripple effect on so many other things. It's just, it's just very unusual and it's, it's very positive ripple effect. And a lot of these people, um, you know, who are watching the show just talk about how much joy the show brings them. I mean, there's one woman who had, who had contacted me um, and she goes, the best part of our week is when myself and my caregiver watch your show. And she goes, and we both sit here and talk at the screen the entire time you're on. And I'm like, damn, I'm on like four freaking hours. You watch it the whole time. Wow. And, and, they, and she's always, oh, it's the thing we look most forward to. And I mean, that just blew my mind. I mean, that just blew my, there's nobody I'd watch for four hours. I certainly wouldn't watch me for four hours. Um, so it, it, it just blows my mind. That they, and it really just brings them joy. And there's just a lot of people that have said things like that. And that's amazing. And, and the one thing I can say now officially is this is by far jb's fantastic finds is by far the biggest thing i have ever done since fitness made simple i mean you always talk about me reinventing myself with different things and yes i had a big blip on vine in a, in a good way with wake up words you when did. that started yeah and that had a lot that had a lot of recognition with it but but there has been nothing as big as fitness made simple I until this and this definitely is getting to that level if not getting beyond we'll, we'll get beyond well, and that's just, that's something I never expected to happen again necessarily, and totally, totally different. If we're talking about things on, on a critical uh, acclaim level, I would, of course, loop into the conversation, hashtag 7-Eleven Chronicles, which, folks, Agreed. go on Facebook, and just for your own amusement, folks, enter in that hashtag, hashtag 7-Eleven Chronicles, and you'll see my man yeah, going to no. town. <laughs> I, that's... I'm just, it's, now that's interesting, yes, yes, no, that did get a lot of critical of my guess, from, from people like yourself, but that never reached the, the right. I'm talking about mass appeal, yes. like, yes. fitness, fitness made simple, I mean, I couldn't walk across the street in, mo in most cities without somebody singing that fitness made simple song. Yeah. I mean, every time I walked into Starbucks or something like that, people would be talking about the, the, the research, oh, you want to try this for free, you want to try that for free, just, you know, recognizing me from the commercial. That thing brought so many beautiful things into my life that I never would have even imagined. I never took anything for granted. I was always just a big ball of gratitude for everything Fitness Made Simple brought into my life, in addition to the fitness benefits. As I said, fit, it created a ripple effect of benefits. It improved my body, it improved my mentality, and it improved my confidence level, but all of that transformed into a huge ripple, of, uh, ripple effect throughout my entire life, improving everything. This show is the first thing that has ever had the hint of that mass appeal, where even from the commercials, people are now coming up to me and saying, sold, 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 because that's one of the things said on the commercials. Yep. And, um, and, and the, uh, one of the people who, who we have a lot of testimonials in the Fitness Made Simple, um, in the, uh, you mean calling Fitness Made, that's a Freudian slip in a good way. Um, in the JBFF, uh, the JB's Fantastic Finds commercial, we have a lot of testimonial people, people saying, I found my treasure, I found my treasure, I found all my treasures on JB's Fantastic Finds. 
one of the people, uh, I start off saying sold, 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 and this girl says sold, 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 and then a guy says sold, 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 but he says it with such gusto, and he's watching me on the big screen on JB's Fantastic Finds, and he's like bouncing out of his of his couch, like he's just like totally enthralled with this show, like it's the best thing in the world, saying sold, sold, sold. His wife now says, she goes, yes, I just refer to myself as the wife of the sold, sold, sold guy. <laughs> everybody, everybody just recognizes him for saying sold, sold, sold on your commercial. So I've changed my name from Lisa to the wife of the sold, sold, sold guy. I mean, that's, that's, that's hysterical. I mean, John, think about this. You're creating secondary cult figures. You're creating cult figures around you. That's amazing. They are. That's what I'm saying. That's what he's going to get. But he wants to get. Um, I know it's funny because his name is James, and he wants to. And he watches the show all the time too, and he's become a friend. But um, but he wants to get some sort of cameo or some sort of guest spot on some Viking show that he talks about. I said I, I wouldn't be surprised if you do. I said it would. I said it would not be too surprising because I see people. Because they also do a show, um, he and his wife also do a show on crystals, they call Fireside Crystals, um, and it's funny because I've seen, because i watched this show because we're friends, and I've seen people in the chat all of a sudden out of the blue saying, wait, are you the sold, sold, sold guy? Because they hear him talking, they hear him talking, because he also says at one point in the commercial, he goes, I found my treasure, and he punches to the camera with this big ass, beautiful, sterling silver, massive eagle ring, and everybody loves that ring. But you hear him like he's he's a recognizable figure on the commercial. So people have actually said on his show, "Wait, are you the sold, sold, sold guy on the JBFF commercial?" <laughs> That's amazing. So I mean, it's just hysterical. I mean, it's just, it just blows my mind that it's reached that level in two months. That's unbelievable to me. And I'm just and I'm just I'm just walking on I'm just walking on gratitude air. Because I never thought that would happen again. I never thought it would happen the first time with Fitness Made Simple. And Fitness Made Simple, I mean, you know, in j just out of fact, it's not bragging, it's not modesty, it's not anything. Made me a household name Yeah. Th from Fitness Made Simple. And I never expected that to happen. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and certainly when the TV atmosphere changed and we could no longer get the deals like we got with Fitness Made Simple, um, and also the, the landscape changed where like one of the MSOs at Delphi Media Services ceased to exist and they were multi-millions of subscribers and things like that um you know we lost our whole platform and stuff i never thought that could be rebuilt and it just so happened i saw an opportunity um happening in the tv industry after jb's fantastic finds had already started and i said hold on let's see if we can recapture lightning in a bottle a second time because i saw an opportunity and and, and to put this crazy show on air is just ridiculous um and then it just caught fire. So um, it's that was that that was that was a little moment of clever Oprah type inspiration, like an aha moment. Well, and it's funny because your your fitness made simple principles. Uh, I was actually just discussing it uh, recently uh, with a, a relatively new friend, a uh, dear friend, the great author and future household name Maya Master. Your principle about when you explained to me previously that you don't build six pack abs, you expose them. You get rid of the fat. And then, boom, there they are. True. And uh, well, actually, the abs, the abs are small muscles. They're very easy to build. Sure, very sure. Easy to sculpt. And you don't want them to stand out and be big and bulky. Yes. You just want them to look like ripped and flat. Yes. Like ripped and flat. And, and that's, that's basically just like having the water. Like when the, when the tide goes out on a beach, right. it's the same thing as the fat. Imagining the water is the fat. You've got to have that tide recede. So it can show off the sand. Absolutely. It can show off the, the definition in the sand. And I was explaining it to her in the sense of, uh, because she, due to a medical condition, had unfortunately gotten to the point where lap band surgery was necessary. So uh, she had that, but then she's been self-conscious about loose skin since then, subsequently, and she has just scheduled her tummy tuck. So I said, the good news, according to my man, John Bastow, is, you know, you don't have to build six-pack abs. You just got to, you know, expose them. So she should be fine, I would say, post-tummy well, tuck. You've got to build the little muscles as, as opposed to getting them taut and tight. Right. But as far as, like, seeing them or ever getting, like, actually what people say is abs. People say, what's the best exercise to do for abs? The best exercise is putting down the damn fork. That's, That's right. That's the best exercise you could do for abs. True that. I mean, because most of the people that are saying this, I mean, they're pretty built dudes. Right. They just have a lay a natural layer of body fat, and the muscle. What happens is a lot of them. You ever notice how people, when they first get into fitness, yeah. Um, if you have a layer of fat anyway, okay, 
and you build muscle, sometimes you look even bigger. Yes, your body shape's going to change. Like your shoulders are going to get wider. Right. Your waist may be getting, getting narrower, but you may not have any definition because you still have that body fat layer and the muscles are just pushing it more forward. Right. You still got to reduce the body fat layer in order to see the definition that you're actually building. That's true. That's true. And I, I won't be going the tummy tuck route, so uh, I'll be doing it the on natural, but I'm still working my way down. I, I'm, I, I'm glad to say I, uh, I will be uh, hopefully getting there one day myself, but uh, I'm excited for my friend who is going to get to uh, experience that uh, joy for herself. Uh, but yes, I, I, you'll be glad to know that I invoked you in that conversation on, you know, what I learned about the, the human body and that we don't build them, we expose them. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, I, I quote you on air and off air, my man, because uh, when, when you're friends with the great John Bastow, that's what you do, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, oh, when it comes to... Well, you, well, you, well, you know, I, I think you're just going to say because you quote me because I'm an FDH dignitary. You, you, well, that as well. That as well, certainly <laughs> to be sure. And, uh, you know, certainly uh, we've, we've made a, a case here uh, at minimum to get on and talk about the Oscars and the Emmys every year and everything. So, uh, you know, it's always... Oh, I love a, it. Well, you're, it's a, a, you're a buddy. And it's, it's how old... Are, one thing I was trying to think of, because somebody asked me, because I had a lot of stuff to do today, and um, as, as you know... And that's why we're recording this so late. Whenever you air it is, is when you're, but for folks oh, listening, we're recording this way into like one in the morning. Yes. Um, but, um, and I don't think I'm disclosing anything, any secrets by saying that. I think it just no, shows no, how to work. Yeah. Um, but, 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 but somebody, uh, I was talking about how I do, um, you know, the uh, Emmy and, and, uh, and Oscars recap with you. And they go, oh, how long are you doing that for? And I'm like, oh God, I don't even know. Probably how, long, how many how many years have we been doing this? Well, when when I met you in New York, it was 2012. So really, uh, probably 2013 or 2014 and thereafter. I'm thinking. I don't we remember. We started that. We started that soon. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I was gonna I was gonna guess five. I told him five. Yeah, I it's said about five, but don't quote me. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think it's been you know more years than that, but uh, okay. yeah, it's uh, it's it's been. A while, and uh, like I said, it's it's always a blast. And uh, like I said, I'm I'm so happy uh, for any of the successes you ever have. And as JB's fantastic finds really popping off the way that it is, that is uh, great to see, my man. So uh, it shocks the sheet out of me. I'll it, tell you uh, that much. It's just, <laughs> um, and, and I say that with with all humbleness because it's I never expected anything from it. Uh, it, 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 and it's the first thing I've ever done that was, I mean, once again, on a very small level, but I mean, was profitable from day one. Even like fitness makes simple, anything, everything has a buildup, like an investment right. or a buildup or, you know, some sort of like, like grace period before it actually brings in any type of thing that can pay a bill. Right. Um, and JB's Fantastic Finds was the first thing that, even the first show when we had like no viewers and everything, it sold something so it could pay a bill. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it may have been $10, but whatever, we could buy we could buy lunch, you know, you know, we could buy a salad or something like that. Um, but, but the thing is, it, and it just, uh, it, it grew to a certain level on, a, on the multi-show channels. Uh, but then it just, I mean, really, I mean, the past two months have been just very, very hard to keep up with since the TV commercials have started. And it's been fun. It's been, it's been a really, it, it's the type of busy that you're excited to handle rather than you think of as a chore to handle because the show is fun. The people are fun. Just seeing the effort they put into when they're sending in pictures of the treasures they win on the show. If you go to the JB's Fantastic, for anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about, if you just go to the JB's Fantastic Finds uh, Facebook group and you join it, you'll just see a sea of pictures of things that these people have won and that have made their days better and have brought some sort of happiness. But they're actually like creating like, a, a, these elaborate sets to show off some of their jewelry, some of their statues, some of the mythological figures, some of their rocks, geodes, crystals. But but the things look like professional photos. They just look amazing, the effort they're putting into it. And you couldn't pay people to put in that. And it's the best testimonial for the show, and they're actually just doing it. Yeah. Well, that's when you know you got a winning concept, and uh, clearly that is they the case. Energy. Their, yes. their, their work inspires me. Well, that's that's what happens. It's, it's the virtuous circle here when you're building a good community. And um, I'm very, very happy, uh, and like I say, unsurprised that this is taking off and the latest uh, reinvention is uh, going so great. So I uh, look forward to keeping up with what's happening with that and uh, chatting on awards shows on down the road. Thank you, as always, my friend, for making time for us. It's always a pleasure. Always. You are, uh, first of all, you're a friend first, and you are a, uh, 
priority because you're just a damn good guy and I enjoy uh, chatting with you so much. It's uh, That's why I can't even remember how many years. I've heard it for three years. But uh, I, I could have, it could be eight years. You, you could be very, very well right. Um, we always have fun together. Been a ball every time. We have fun. I always appreciate it. I'm always glad to have you on. Thanks so much, my friend. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in.